Hey internet, Adrian here for Digital Dojos. I have recently just came back from my trip to Japan, and if you're interested in seeing all the vlogs and content that's coming out from it on that front, be sure to check out my personal channel in the description below. But with that, I am continuing to milk the content in this very niche video, uh, because as I came back, I came back with all sorts of random and various tech from retro games, new camera equipment, stuff like that, that, um, yeah, I, I had to like check in extra bags. I had to ship some stuff from my parents' house. It was a whole ordeal. But I figured why not share some of my insights and tips into buying tech from Japan and some things to keep in mind if you ever so have the opportunity, which I would highly recommend. All right, uh, before we jump into it, uh, outside of my recent trip, I'm speaking from the perspective of somebody who grew up, was born, and raised in Japan, not to mention just got my passion and obsession with technology uh, while I was there. So uh, have some insight into how things work there. Uh, with that, first question off the top, is tech actually cheaper in Japan? The short and long answer here is yes and no. Obviously, your mileage will vary, right? Yes, in the sense there are certain categories of genres of tech like retro gaming that traditionally at a baseline level, just like the price and the market around it, is traditionally cheaper. Now, this is in relation to a lot of the products being manufactured there. You get a lot of popular brands in Japan that originated there like Sony, like Canon, like Nintendo, so on and so forth. Thus, it's in higher kind of manufacturer. It's you're not paying the import costs that you would in places like the United States or people who are reselling it abroad. Uh, all, all of those reasons contribute to baseline prices being cheaper for certain categories. Other more modern tech, Apple, MacBooks, TVs, things of that nature, are generally going to be within the same reasonable price range as they would on sites like Amazon or what have you. Now, it's also cheaper in certain aspects depending on you, the traveler. If you were a foreigner visiting Japan, you can take advantage of incentives like the tax-free shopping and a lot of these popular tourist attractions and shops, meaning you're not paying the sales tax, which can add up, and depending on the uh, high-ticket item that you may be buying, can obviously save you hundreds if not thousands of dollars in the long run. Now, furthermore, the yen rate is also something to factor in here. If I took, for example, US currency, a dollar, because that's what I use in my main currency, one dollar is often equivalent on a one-to-one -one ratio to 100 Japanese yen. So that's the typical conversion scale. Now, depending on the economy and the market, that yen rate's gonna fluctuate. For example, while I was there, at best, I think it was a one dollar was equivalent to 130 yen. I think like it was like 150 yen before that. So quite literally you're getting more bang for your buck when you're paying and using Japanese currency that you converted from US dollar. It's just, again, saving you that much more on top of everything else. All right, with that out of the way, what are things to be mindful of when shopping for tech or electronics in Japan? Because tech is so broad, there's a couple of categories and genres that I want to highlight. Cameras, phones, computers. I want to focus on the more popular general electronics versus the big ticket items, like I said, like TVs, because Typically, I would imagine most of you aren't going out to Japan to go and buy 65-inch TVs uh, to ship back or somehow manage to bring that or check that on a plane. So that in mind, phones. This is actually something I experienced because when I lived there, I had to bring my phones with me to the States and I had to get them unlocked and all that good stuff. While that's fine, that traditionally works, not a problem nowadays. Language, not a problem. You can change that in iOS. One thing to be mindful of if you either buy a phone in Japan that you plan on bringing back or maybe you're doing it for resale purposes, who knows, to each their own. Japanese phones, per privacy laws, cannot turn off the shutter sound when it comes to taking photos. This is so that, obviously, you can't take photos of people unknowingly, or at least alerts people around you. It can't be a creeper in that aspect. But while it may not be a make or break feature, it is something just to keep in mind. If you buy an iPhone in Japan, that is not something you can turn off at a software level. Cameras. Certain camera manufacturers have specific models, Sony being one of them. If you buy a camera in Japan, which is often a popular tourist thing to do because of those incentives, or the availability of selection, and just baseline prices, um, certain models are Japanese only. Like it's hard coded in the language settings and menus of the camera at a software level. You can't change it. Often salespeople will notify you of this. Even when I was in the stores buying some camera equipment, they were very generous to mention it at some level. I heard them mentioning it to a lot of other people looking to buy uh, that there's international models and then there's like the Japanese only model or the Japan only model. So keep that in mind. Best insight here would be do your research beforehand, know what you're getting, know exactly what you're looking for. Demo the product. Often in a lot of these department stores, you can try the product firsthand. 
But at the very minimum, at the very least, if not, if you're not sure, ask. Ask the sales rep if they speak a little bit of English. Often these popular tourist, you know, sections are very aware of this and have somebody who can at least interpret at a very basic level. Or, of course, even better, speak a little Japanese if you can. Uh, it, it goes a long way, even if it's broken. And at the very minimum, try using a translator app just to confirm the compatibility of the thing that you're looking for and making sure that it'll work for you in your country or language of preference. Now, computers. This is less of a problem, but I know people do sometimes often go to Japan and think, oh, I'll go get a new computer because I'll save on the sales tax and, and certain brands are manufactured out there, so it's a little cheaper, so on and so forth. Uh, not a problem on the software side in this case. It's just the hardware keyboard layout. Uh, some people don't know in foreign countries when you buy keyboards, as you'd imagine, if the language is different, so are their keyboards. So just something to keep in mind there. All right, as a general whole, when it comes to electronics, to be mindful of is, of course, power, electricity, the things that power, the things that you're trying to buy. Um, depending on your country of residence, this is something to keep in mind. Some places it's 100 volts, 110, 120. Some places it's higher. Europe, Asia, North America, they have different standards, right? So at a minimum level, you might just need a like adapter outlet to work in your country of residence. However, at another level, you might need a transformer to step up the power in terms of volts and so on, or step down the power. In certain cases, like Japan to the US, you're mostly fine for the most part. Again, I use the term mostly there, depending on the product you're using, because generally it's in the same realm of compatibility. So you don't have to worry too much about basic accessories and electronics. But for higher end appliances, I think things like hair dryers, microwaves, uh, so on and so forth. If you're importing those, it is something to at least be mindful of and consider so you don't fry your brand new electronics at the very least. All right. That said, what should you buy when it comes to electronics and tech in Japan? What are the things that I would recommend? Uh, I think first and foremost, it's an easy recommendation for me because I'm biased. If you're into video games, if you're into retro gaming at any scale, Japan is the place to buy these consoles, handheld, old school consoles, video games, definitely the place to buy it because your prices are going to be better in combination with all those other things I mentioned. Your selection is typically going to be better because you're usually buying from the source where a lot of these products were manufactured. So um, a lot of these stores will have uh, a good amount of selection. Uh, and you can get some exclusives, things that were only made in Japan, which uh, tend to have their own appeal in and of itself. Um, and if you're just into that retro scene, again, there's just a wide variety of selection in stores that will carry a lot of these products. Things you do need to keep in mind when it comes to retro games, certain consoles, very specific consoles, the Nintendo Wii, for example, uh, Nintendo 64, if you're going even further back, are region locked at a software level. For the Nintendo 64, it's a physical level, I should say. You can get an adapter nowadays for like two bucks to change this. But for things like the Nintendo Wii, you need a Japanese console or Japanese Wii to play Japanese games. Same thing for the PlayStation 2. Um, other things like the PS Vita, Nintendo 3DS, um, certain 360 titles and PS4, PS5, modern consoles, you don't have to worry about it. But just do your research. Again, going back to understanding if you're buying something in a category that you're interested in, do your research before buying. Always helps. Uh, other things, really just general tech. When it comes to general tech, your selection, the variety of choices you're going to have at a lot of these stores, headphones, cameras, um, especially accessories for a lot of this stuff, there's no better place to shop for than uh, Japan and a lot of these popular stores just because of the sheer amount of selection and choice you're going to have in store and in person. Look, of course, there's something to be said about e-commerce. You can shop online for almost anything and get it uh, next day, but there is something to be said about testing a lot of these products out in person. And again, the benefit of saving on top of the tax-free shopping and baseline prices as well as a yen rate can all add to a nice, decent amount of savings. I, I definitely cumulatively saved thousands of dollars. Uh, but that in mind, of course, what Japan is known for is also just kitschy, niche, random mystery tech, random brands, adapters, crazy gizmos and gadgets that Japan is also just synonymous for that may not make a lot of sense. But if you're into that thing, there's no better place to get it than, of course, the source. Last but not least, with all that in mind, where should you buy this tech? What are my store recommendations at an overall level? I think at a base level, it, it, it's often recommended, and for good reason, even if it's a bit of a tourist trap, uh, Akihabara, like the electronic town as it's aptly named, is just a very famous stop to go to, even if you're just visiting Japan and you're not really into like retro games, anime, and all that sort of stuff. Um, there's no shortage of electric electronic stores and popular chains here where you can get all sorts of things from computers, 
cameras, accessories, phones, gaming consoles, the whole nine. So if you have time and you're visiting Japan, Akihabara should definitely be on the list when it comes to shopping for tech and electronics. Stores like the Yodobashi Akiba location, very, very popular chains there where it's quite literally like six, seven floors of different electronics that you can check out. That's where I bought this lens I'm shooting the video with now. Um, popular chains like Bic Camera or Kitsumaro Camera are very popular camera stores to get both used and uh, brand new camera equipment at really great prices and rates. Um, Edion is another popular department store and one of my personal favorites and one thing I would highly recommend checking out is the second hand market. The second hand market in Japan is uh, an, I would describe as just another ball game and, and very different from like the tr traditional sense and, and connotation around used goods. I think it stems from the culture of the Japanese people and how they treat their products and want it to see uh, further life cycle, thus getting sold to these recycle markets or these secondhand stores. Uh, and when it comes to se secondhand stores, uh, there's really popular chains like Hard Off, which are well known in things like the retro gaming community. Yes, that is the name. It stands for Hardware Off, uh, where they have a lot of used electronics that they test, validate, and then resell for significantly cheaper prices. So on top of already having great selection and stuff that's exclusive again to Japan, you get these really, really great prices where you're getting games for like $2, for example. But my personal tip, if you're ever getting the opportunity to shop at a hard off chain to look for some electronics, computer parts, music instruments, cameras, um, video games, what have you, don't just look at the curated section of the stuff that's tested and, and being sold in good condition. Go to the gems in the back, the junk section, as they call it at hard off. It's these blue bins that they'll put various tech in that it's, it's, it's a Russian roulette of buying tech. The tech is often, as they say, either broken or they don't know what's wrong with it. The junk section is quite literally meant for people who want to buy the parts for repair or to part it out and use it for other projects. But as you'll often find, it could just be as small as this product was missing a power cable or the power cable was bad. I bought a Nintendo Wii, for example, for $6 that just needed a new power cable and was working fine. And that can often be the case for a specific tech that you buy out of the junk section. At worst, you can buy it for reasons like display purposes, like I did with some of the PlayStation 2s that I bought from uh, there that were exclusive or just things I've been looking for. Um, other cases, they can be repair projects if you're into that sort of thing when it comes to electronics that you want to try your hand at soldering or kind of tinkering and figuring out what's wrong with something. So I would highly recommend checking out the secondhand market. It's very popular in Japan. It's very well known. And again, the, the quality and condition of products are just at another level despite being used. Not to mention you save a lot of money in the process. All right. Outside of that, there is no shortage of stores. I mean, there's all sorts of chains throughout Japan and, and other department stores that you can definitely check out. It doesn't hurt to Google on your phone or look at the area that you're in, depending on where you're traveling. Uh, just do your research. At the end of the day, it, it never hurts. But those are some of my top recommendations, some of the places I checked out when I was traveling. Um, shout out to a couple other like localized chains. I don't necessarily know if they're across Japan, but I know at least where my family lives. Mangasoko is another popular secondhand market for all sorts of goods. Second Street is another one that's more and more popular that I saw, uh, at least in Okinawa, Japan. And then for those of you who maybe don't ever get the opportunity to travel abroad, I understand it's not as simple and as easy as buying a plane ticket to Japan, uh, taking advantage of online markets and e-commerce markets to get exclusives from Japan. Nowadays, there's websites like Zen Market, uh, Mercari, Play Asia, where you can pay a bit of a fee, bit of a premium, but you can still get some of those Japanese products or there's exclusives. Furthermore, certain markets like Zen Market and other sites, they will do what's called drop shipping. So they'll buy the product for you locally in Japan. So they'll get it at a cheaper rate and cheaper price, or they'll just get exclusives that you're looking for um, off of popular Japanese auction sites, like things that you can only buy locally in Japan, like their Yahoo auctions platform. Um, and then they will ship it to you from their warehouse. So they pay like a middleman fee for them to buy the items for you, store it, and then ship it to you. But oftentimes you can still, especially if you're buying in bulk, a lot of people in like the retro gaming community will do this, buy in bulk, and they'll still save overall in their overall purchase. Again, be mindful, do your research, but there's a lot of cool platforms out there to take advantage of where you can still buy online and get some uh, advantage of the deals, exclusiveness, and just getting products from Japan. All right, with that in mind, I hope this helps somebody out there, even if you're just that one person looking to travel to Japan and randomly stumbling upon this video. If you did and you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.